What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here and moving on with transformations of functions, we're now gonna talk about vertical translations in this video. We're talking about vertical translations. Another way to describe that is if we take a function and shift it up or down. That's another way to describe vertical translations. So what have we done so far? We have a parent function, we transformed it into this format here. And what have we covered so far from all the transformation values? We covered the A value, the K value, the D value. So what's left to cover? The C value. And that's actually what's going to tell us if a function is shifted up or down. It's going to depend on the value of C. And very similar to the D value, the C value is going to have three cases. Either the C value is going to be positive, either it's going to equal zero, or it's going to be negative. It's going to be less than zero. Now, if C is greater than zero, what we're doing is we're taking a function and shifting it up by C units. Okay, so an example of that is if we have like the absolute value of x plus 2. Notice that that C value is positive 2. The C value is always going to be at the end of a function. So like x squared minus 4. Or we might have uh, something more complex like 5 root x plus 3. And then we'll have like plus 7. So that C value would be positive 7. It's going to be at the end of that transform function. Okay, so in this case, C value is positive 2. So we're shifting it. We're shifting absolute value of x, which looks like this, up by two units. So now it would be up here. This would be the absolute value of x plus 2. Right? So instead of at 0 and 0, it would start at 0 and 2. Now, if the c value is equal to 0, as you guess, there's probably or not probably, but for sure there's not going to be uh, any shift up or down. And then if that C value is negative, then we are shifting the function down by absolute value C units. An example of that is absolute value of X minus 2. So the way that looks is if we have the absolute value of x, well, if we take it and shift it down, it looks like that. I just took this, shifted it down by two units, so this is at zero and zero, and then this here is at zero and negative two. Right, took it and shifted it down by two units, and notice that we don't say we shifted it down by negative two units, we just say we shifted it down by two units, hence why that absolute value C is there. The fact that C is negative gets described here, the fact that we're shifting it down. So you don't have to say negative two units, you would just say the absolute value of that C value when it's negative. So you would say uh, we're shifting it down by two units. All right, and that's pretty much it for all the transformations. We went over the A value, the K value, the D value, and then the C value in this video. And what we're going to cover in the next video is if we take all of these values, all these transformations, and mix them together. So how do we go about, for example, graphing something like, uh, like this? in a smooth, quick way, right? And notice how the parent function is the square root of x in this case, but we could apply these same transformations to anything. So what about something like that? How do we graph stuff like this in a fairly smooth and quick way? How do we uh, graph when we are combining all these different transformations that we went over? And that's what we're gonna cover in the next couple of videos.